Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we're gonna to be talking about the differences between CRNAs or Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetists and AAs, which are Anesthesiologist Assistants. So they're both anesthesia providers and we're gonna be talking about the education, the history, the salary, the job roles, the autonomy or scope of practice, and how it is between the two working. So I think it's gonna be a very interesting video. It's gonna be informative and help a lot of people who are kind of confused about the two roles or who wanna go into anesthesia and aren't sure which path to take. And I wanna make it very clear ahead of time that this video is not to bash AAs. I am a CRNA, but I'm not making this video to put down AAs or talk bad about them. I'm making this video to simply educate and inform everybody who's interested in anesthesia. So with that being said, let's get right into the video. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is the history of both roles and how they got started. Now, CRNAs have been around since the 1860s, since the Civil War era. And at first they were just nurses trained in anesthesia that were just practicing, but then it became more of an education path or an advanced education path. And schools started to provide training in nurse anesthesia. And then over time, it changed from a diploma to a bachelor's to a master's. And now in 2022, it's gonna be changing to a doctorate degree requirement. So it's been going for a long time. The career has a lot of history involving providing anesthesia in the wars and providing anesthesia just in general. So now let's talk about the history of AAs. I'm gonna be referring to these both as their abbreviations because it's hard to keep saying the words over and over again without messing up, but AAs have been around since the 1960s. The role was originally started by physician anesthesiologists who noticed a shortage in anesthesia providers. So they got to thinking if they could create an anesthesiologist assistant, it would give them more providers and the training shorter than training a bunch of MDs. So that was the thought there from what I've read about the history. I don't wanna to go too far into detail on the histories because one, I'm way more familiar with the history of CRNAs versus AAs. I did read a lot about the history of AAs before I made this video. And two, it can get really deep when you start getting into names and training programs and things like that. But the anesthesiologist assistance programs have been around since the 1960s. Now let's talk about prerequisites for each before you can even go to anesthesia school, which could be CRNA school or AA school. So for CRNAs, the prerequisites include having a BSN or a bachelor's in nursing, then working in the ICU for at least one year. It's usually more like two to five years and then taking any additional classes and tests you need to take. So your CCRN, which is your critical care nurse certification, your GRE you might have to take for certain schools, higher level chemistry if you didn't take that in undergrad. And the prereqs for AAs look a little bit different. They need to have a heavy science background, so, but not in nursing. So they can have a pre-med degree, a respiratory therapy degree, a biology degree, something like that, that gives them their science prereqs. And then they need to shadow an anesthesiologist for eight hours before they can apply to school. Um, it is heavily considered if they have clinical experience that is important in the application process, although it's not a requirement, but I did read that a lot of schools like people who have some kind of clinical experience, whether that be scribing or being involved in the hospital in some capacity or being a respiratory therapist. And the reason I'm mentioning this one specifically is because I know respiratory therapists who wanted to pursue anesthesia and ended up going the AA route because the CRNA route would have required them to go back to undergrad and get a degree in nursing and then go into anesthesia. So they took the AA route because they already had the background degree and the clinical experience. So in all, the paths are similar in the way that you need a bachelor's degree to go into both. The CRNA one's nursing based and you need critical care experience. The AA path, you don't really need the experience, but it is recommended and you need to shadow for eight hours in anesthesia. Moving on, we're gonna get into the educational requirements or the schooling. This is something a lot of people are very interested in, so I think this is a good topic to cover. Let's start off by talking about the length of schooling. So CRNA school is usually 27 to 36 months, depending on if you're getting a master's or a doctorate degree. A master's degree would be the shorter programs, a doctorate degree would be 36 months. And like I said, in 2022, all the CRNA programs are gonna be doctorates, so they will all be 36 months. And AA programs, their schooling is about 24 to 28 months, depending on what program you go to, and they're all master's programs. There aren't doctorate programs for AAs yet. So if you're getting a master's, the length of schooling is very similar, almost exactly the same, but if you're getting a doctorate in CRNA, then obviously the AA is the shorter route or just getting a master's in CRNA. It's also important to consider the number of programs. So in the United States, there's only 11 AA programs and there's over 100 CRNA programs. So there's a lot more CRNAs in CRNA schools than there is AAs in AA schools. From my research, I found the costs of schooling were relatively comparable. 
um, I only did graduate schooling or CRNA and AA school specifically, not the undergrad, but they usually cost between 60 and 100,000. I know that's a very broad range, but it depends if you go to a private or a public school. So if you wanna narrow that down even more, I'd find that the average was more like 80 to 100,000 because I find that more people go to private schools than public schools or like state schools. And then clinical requirements or didactic. So the class load seemed pretty similar. I looked at some curriculums from big AA schools, although there wasn't that many, I was able to look at the ones there was. And since I've been to CRNA school, I know what our curriculum's like. And the curriculum seems similar, so it starts out with like introductory anesthesia classes and then moves into the more heavy stuff, the more in-depth anesthesia classes, pharmacology, all that. And then clinical starts being integrated into the classes. So I noticed that the clinical requirements were pretty similar between CRNAs and AAs, the hours and the numbers of cases. But what I didn't see was the specific cases that AAs are required to have. Now, I'm not saying they're not required to have specific cases, but I know from my experience in CRNA school, we had to have certain numbers of certain cases, like certain numbers of heart cases, certain numbers of PED zero to three, three to five, certain numbers of lung cases, stuff like that. So I couldn't find that information on AAs. I would assume they had some kind of similar tracking system so that they could have a variety of cases. But if you know, leave a comment below and let me know, because as far as I got in my research, I didn't see those specifics. For me, I think the biggest difference in schooling would be that CRNAs obviously have a critical care nursing background, so they can go straight into clinical and they already know how to start IVs, how to get meds, how to do A lines, how to do central lines. Like they have a lot of basic skills that are used in anesthesia already and AAs might not have those same skills when they go right into clinical, so they might need a little more laboratory time before clinical or some more hands-on experience when they get to clinical. So even if they were like an RT or something before, an RT is a respiratory therapist, by the way, um, they probably didn't have that much experience like putting in IVs and things. So RTs stick A lines and they do a lot of respiratory care, which is awesome for anesthesia, but they don't, you mess with central lines very much, swans, um, just specific things like that that are kind of like more nursing geared. Not saying they can't learn it in school, just saying that one advantage of CRNA is the nursing background. Now I wanna talk about job opportunities. So this is kind of simple to explain, but CRNAs can practice in any state they want and AAs can only practice in 11 states. But from what I've researched and what I've read, the 11 states they can practice in, it's kind of easy for them to get a job there, so to speak, or the job market is looking pretty good. For CRNAs, since I just searched for a job last year, I know that the CRNA job market is looking very good and I got job offers from all over the country. So that's kind of the differences. I guess if you were in an area that did not have AAs, um, you'd have to consider moving because you can't move for school and then go back to your area that doesn't have AAs. So there'd be like a lot to think about there. Also, one big thing is that AAs cannot practice in the military. So CRNAs can join and practice anesthesia in the military and work independently there. AAs do not practice in the military. So they can work in VA hospitals or veterans hospitals in certain situations, be contracted in there, but they would not be part of the military. So if military is really the route you want to take, you definitely want to know that. So I thought it was worth mentioning on here. Now I wanted to talk about the job roles, how they're different, how they're similar, and what the scope of practice is like for each. So for CRNAs, scope of practice really depends on your location, your state, and the hospital you work in. So some states let CRNAs work independently. There are a few states that do not, and it also depends on your hospital policies. Now the hospital I work in, we work in an anesthesia care team model, which means we work in collaboration with physician anesthesiologists. So we work as a team. We're able to utilize most of our skills, most of our scope of practice. We're limited on a couple of things, but there are other hospitals that I could work at in the area that would allow me to utilize my full scope of practice that would encompass those things. So it just really depends. And as far as AAs go, they always must work under the direct supervision of an anesthesiologist or a physician anesthesiologist. So they won't have the opportunity to practice independently. They cannot be a credential provider on their own. Um, they always have to work in that care team model. But as far as skills go, from what I read and researched on the internet, and just so you know, I looked at both AA heavy websites and CRNA websites. I wanted to make sure I got information from both sides and I tried to like stay neutral on the topic. So for skills, it seems like CRNAs and anesthesia assistants can both perform similar skill sets. So we can both intubate, give meds, things like that, do regional anesthesia, but it seems like that more AAs um, don't do that and the anesthesiologists do it instead. From what I've researched, if you are an AA or you're familiar with it, please comment below and let me know. Um, I wanted to mention that I have not worked directly with AAs. Um, I haven't spoken with an AA. I would love to chat with one and kind of like compare, 
but I've not worked with them, not spoke with them, so I'm not commenting on their clinical performance or anything like that. Um, I'm just speaking from my research and I just wanted to make that clear before I keep going. So now let's talk about the thing everybody's wondering about, I'm sure, and that is pay. So I was actually surprised about this because I, for some reason, thought that CRNAs overall would just make way more than AAs. Um, I don't know why I think it's because we have the option to practice independently, but now when I explain, it's gonna kind of make sense to you. So in ACT models or anesthesia care team models where physician anesthesiologists are supervising or directing CRNAs and AAs, they make similar amounts, especially starting out. So the salary is very similar. But when this changes and why I think I had the idea that CRNAs made so much more is because CRNAs can work independently in independent practice. And in that scenario, they would make a lot more. Well, the AAs don't have that option, so their salary cap is kind of limited. And I hope that makes sense to you. So CRNAs and AAs in team with physician anesthesiologists make very similar amounts. CRNAs working independently make much more, but AAs don't have that option, so they kind of just stay here because they can't work independently. And that kind of wraps up everything I wanted to cover. So I'm very interested, people who are watching this, are you more interested in CRNA or AA? And to me, it really seems like it has a lot to do with your background. So the people who are interested in CRNA seem to have a nursing background, obviously, and the people who are interested in AA seem to have a different background and then have become interested in anesthesia. So one other way to compare these is kind of like comparing a nurse practitioner to a PA or physician's assistant. So NP and PA, um, kind of similar. NPs can work independently or can work with a physician. It's the nursing track to get to the advanced provider role. And then PAs can only work with a physician, they can't work independently, and they're considered like mid-level providers because they're a physician extender and they work like directly with physicians. But they can work in the same role, NPs and PAs, or NPs can go off separately. So it's kind of similar, and maybe I should do a whole video about that, I'll have to interview some NPs and PAs. I just wanna throw that in there really quick because there are a lot of different roles that kind of do similar things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really wanted to make it informative, kind of try to stay neutral on the subject. Um, I do not personally feel like my job is threatened by AAs. I don't mind talking about it neutrally. Um, I don't work with them, they don't work in my state. And I feel like there's enough anesthesia jobs kind of to go around right now. So I know there are some complications with letting like somebody else into your you know, career zone and there are some politics involved. But I've never worked with AAs, can't speak on that, and um, I feel secure in my job. So any questions you have, I'll be happy to answer them. Please leave them below. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I will see you next week.